This is our presentation for the computer science capstone from fall 2022 to winter 2023 for the Walktober project. Our team lead was Bailey, and our members were Alana, Alyssa, Kevin, Nathan, and myself, Richard. Um, our sponsors for this project were Aaron Bransford, Shelby Sarad, and the PSU Rec Center. I'll be introducing us to the project as well as closing us out. Um, so Walktober is an annual program where students, faculty, and community members, they're encouraged to walk 10,000 steps each day for, for the month of October. The software that was previously being used had a lot of issues with it being clunky and having a poor user interface. So the project that we were working on was designing and creating a new application uh, through website and mobile applications for the users to use. Uh, we were the front end team, so we we're working on those things that users would see and interact with, such as user logs, leaderboards, teams, as well as different chatting applications. I will now pass it off to Bailey for a quick demo. My name is Bailey Cranley, and I'm going to be giving you a demo of our application. So this is our sign in page, and here you can go, you have a button where you can go and create a new account, you can log in with an email or password, or you can also sign in with your Gmail account, which is what I'll be doing. So on the left hand side here, we have our leaderboard, which as you saw when the page loaded, it automatically scrolled me down to my, uh, my profile on the leaderboard so that I can easily find where I am and how many steps I've taken. We also have a Discord chat on the right-hand side that includes everyone in the program. So all of the different users and admins and everyone involved can talk to each other and talk about how they might want to plan walks together or how there's events happening where they can walk to together. And we also have a progress bar on the upper right-hand corner that shows your a bar graph of the steps that you have personally taken over the past week. On the team page, you have the option to either join an existing team or create a new team. When you create a team, you can either make it a public team or a private team. So we are going to make a private team. And when you make a private team, it pops up with this option to give it a password. And so we will give it a password. And now nobody can join this team without entering the password. When we create it, we will be automatically joined onto it. Um, but now nobody can can join this team without knowing the password. So that means that this team will only be for me and my friends versus a public team can be for anyone who wants to join. Uh, our team homepage also includes a table down here that shows all the different people that are in, in your team and it highlights who is the team leader. On uh, the manual steps logging page, you can enter steps for a specific day of the month. So let's say that I want to change how many steps I took today in, instead of being from 10,000 steps up to 12,000 steps. And then when I submit it, it updates automatically and it will also update the leaderboard automatically. Uh, and then if you're on a phone application, you will also have the option to uh, integrate one of the health apps so that if you are wearing an Apple Watch or a Fitbit or any other kind of pedometer, it will update your steps automatically anytime that you open the app from your pedometer. Uh, but also on the website, we have the option to do manual step logging. The, if you are an admin account, then you will have access to this admin page, which gives you uh, all the different settings that can be changed. It allows you to create open teams, which are public teams that anyone can join, generate different reports, set announcements to be sent to the Discord chat, or see a table of all the different users and all the different teams as well at the bottom. And with the users, you have a button where you can go as an admin and you can edit their step logs if something is um, not working with it. We also, the last thing that we have here is an about page and that will take you to PSU's website that displays all of the Walktober information and shows you all of the different events that are going on with Walktober and all the um, resources that they have for you. That concludes our demo. So I'm going to pass it off to Nathan to talk about everything that we accomplished. All right, yeah, here's where I get into the what of what we did. So what we did, we created an app, a web app with the Ionic framework with React. It's a dynamic web app that's responsive to user input. We made it so it's deployable as a web app to both web websites, web browsers, but also can be deployed as a web app to the Android, Google Play Store, and the Apple App Store. It has accessible design with the web page, 
making sure that there's high enough contrast for people with low vision to see. And also there's some elements of the page that have specific design differences to make things stand out so people with low vision can see it. It's also an interactive platform with chat integration for people who want to speak in teams with the teams that they join up. Who is it for? It is for the administrative staff at the PSU Rec Center to make announcements for the platform and also do some general maintenance if users are incorrectly inputting their data and other things like that. The users who will be using the platform are students and faculty participating in the event, as well as some non-PSU affiliated participants. So here we're going to display our most interesting features, the steps logging. So if you don't have a health tracker, you can manually enter your steps, the leaderboard, so you can see your position, compare how you're doing to other people, teams, so you can join up with other people, form a bit of a community in the chat, so you can engage with those people. So here we have our steps logging. As you can see, there has a lot of data on the below the part of it here. This is your past log, so you can see them. It's all properly aligned so you can see, comparatively speaking, how many steps you've gotten compared to other days. It also allows users to enter the exact number of steps they had and the date that they had them, as well as mobile integration so you can sync it to a uh, health integration app. And here we have the leaderboard so you can see your position relative to how everybody else is doing in the event, as well as how well your team is doing to the other teams in the event with highlights to where you are and what your team is to see specifically how you are doing uh, much easier, much faster. And it also sets a cap to how many steps are displayed to not discourage other people from continuing to walk and try and get as many steps as they can. And here I will be handing it off to Alana. Hi, I'm Alana and I'm going to discuss a bit of the what as well. So as Bailey mentioned, we also have teams, which allows users to join together and compete against different teams. Um, our team homepage is displayed here where uh, users can create public and private teams. Uh, it displays all the current teams that are up and running in the table below. And uh, the joining a team enables the team homepage where teammates can check, check, chat with each other and check their progress within the team. We used Discord chat integration for the team chat. Uh, you can see the chat on the left and right sides. It has a guest mode so that no Discord account is required to chat, but if the user desires, they can open the Discord app directly with the button in the top right. On the team homepage, it automatically loads the channel for the current user's team so that they can discuss with their teammates without having to find the channel specifically. And it uses third-party embedding technology so that it's easy to update in the team. And for additional features, we also have a user profile, which lets the user manage their profile photo and their account information like their name and their email. <laughs> it has a calendar available that tracks the number of steps they take every day, and there are three different leaves with different colors and shapes that denote how many steps a user took every day. Uh, the orange leaf is 5,000 to 7,500 steps, the yellow is 7,500 to 9,999 steps, and the green is 10,000 plus steps. Mm -hmm. There are also different shapes and colors to aid in people who are visually impaired. <laughs> For future features, we had some high priority ones that we would have liked to implement, which include badges, alternate sign-in options besides Google and email like Microsoft, Apple, etc. For low priority features, we would have liked to have written our own in-house chat implementations, a walking distance map, collaborative Spotify playlist, team challenges, push notifications to mobile users, and we would have liked to have private chat and direct messages. And now I'm going to pass it off to Alyssa for the house slides. Hi, I'm going to talk about the architecture and development of the program that we created. Uh, first, I'm going to talk about the web stack. Uh, for this, we use the Ionic, Ionic framework. Uh, it is a web app integration framework. Uh, then we also used the React uh, TypeScript language library. We also used GitHub for the CI, CD, and version control. We also used Firebase for our database, which the backend team will cover in a different video. Uh, and we also had the operating systems of iOS, Android, and web app. 
uh, for the architecture of our application. We have the admin user and user, um, which they can access all, of, the all of, the, of these pages via either of the three systems. Uh, the admin user can only act, or they can access the admin page and the announcements page, whereas the user cannot access those, but both admin and user can access all the, pro the home page, profile page, uh, team page, as well as the step log and uh, manual calculator, and the login and sign up page, as well as the surveys. For the development process, uh, we, for the first week, we researched the projects that had, we had available to us and chose which one we would like to work on. Then we continued to plan and gather requirements for the project once we had selected and been assigned the project. Uh, this took about two to three weeks. Uh, after this, we started implement implementing the functional requirements of the project over a 12 week period. Uh, once we were finished with that, uh, we started working on the styling so that it was consistent throughout the website. Um, so there was no clashing designs. For the de development process over the two quarters, everything stayed the same for the first three points. We had the agile development process. We also kept the one week sprints and we also met with the sponsors every other week. Um, from that point, where the quarters differed uh, for the first quarter, everyone was working on everything. Uh, so it was hard to kind of streamline the development process of items uh, and component, components. Um, and everyone was also focused on planning and requirement gathering versus actual development. Um, but we did start uh, developing, developing the site uh, nearing the end. So it, when we entered the winter quarter, we actually switched to having future ownership to be more fluid and more streamlined on development instead of um, kind of having a hard time coordinating branches on the same component or page. Uh, we also focused on implementation and styling for this quarter. And I'm gonna pass it on to Kevin. Thanks, Alyssa. Uh, my name is Kevin. I'm going to continue to walk us through the remainder of the how sections. Uh, the first section details how we broke down project responsibilities and details the contributions individuals made. And the second section covers the unexpected events we encountered with the corresponding lessons we learned from these events. So we broke down responsibilities and contributions into three main component areas, uh, project management, sponsor relations, and software development. For our project management, our team lead Bailey took ownership of steering the direction of the project. An example of this would be uh, breaking down the visualized end capstone product into weekly stories and tasks for us to work on, uh, taking suggestions from our team retro board and turning them to actionable items, et cetera. She created mockups for the first iterations of our page views, facilitated all of our team meetings, uh, led team communication, providing us updates about other members' progress and answering any questions or moving blockers for us while also acting as the liaison between our team and the backend team, taking our questions to their team and resolving any issues. Bailey was also responsible for the sponsor interactions, um, acting as a conduit between our team and the sponsors. PSE Rec, she held meetings to discuss our progress, demo prototypes, gather requirements, create then share design concepts and she created a uh, she she served as a barrier between uh the sponsor and our development team which allowed us to focus on software engineering without external distractions and complications uh we all contributed in the software development phase uh alana was responsible for the team chat functionality did work on site navigation as well as worked on page styling for the entire website bailey worked on user profiles and health app integration it's a mobile only feature I worked on some of the smaller components, the login page, the sign-up page, the first registration form and exit surveys, the final results page, and the joining of an existing team page and the create a new team page, as well as a little work on CACD. Nathan worked on a bunch of stuff. He worked on the functionality that allows users to manually enter steps taken, as opposed to the automatic data syncing from health apps. Uh, he worked on the admin view to alter step counts, the user homepage and the team homepage, the user profile view, 404 error page, the unreleased badges feature, he worked on the calendar and a bunch of bug fixes. He also championed the ES lint issues, which gave us a bunch of headache in the beginning of devel development. Clashed really hard with our CICD that ES lint did, but 
he took ownership of fixing all these issues for a few weeks and did a lot of work to ensure that we weren't roadblocked. So shout out to him for that effort. Richard worked on the administrative view. It's a complex page with a lot of different uh, working components as well as report generations. And there's a lot of custom reports which took a lot of time to meet sponsor requirements. And uh, Alyssa who worked on leaderboards, which is another complex component that filters and displays a bunch of information and the announcements feature. In the second section, I'll talk about the unexpected events and the lessons we learned from these events. So the first event is working on a shared repository. And I think it was expected that we'd be working on a shared repository with another team, but there were many unexpected events that arose from working in tandem with them. We're all new developers, and so it kind of got a little messy working on the same files. Uh, we realized quickly, too, that it's difficult to understand the segmentation between front end and so or back end responsibilities. So we had a lot of merge conflicts to resolve before uh, ending up with the final product that we have today. The lessons learned here is that it, that it just outlined the, the importance of the proactive communication. Uh, you shouldn't assume anyone knows anything about what you need or what you've been working on, and you should let your expectations be known early in the process, the development process. I think that practice will ultimately save a lot of time. Another unexpected event we encountered was working on team chat. We had an idea of implementing a small chat feature and didn't think we needed the complexity of some of the existing chat options. But in the actual implementation phase, the feature grew to a scale that seemed a little too large for the actual capstone project. And we ultimately scrapped it, uh, the work that done on that in lieu of an embedded Discord option. So from this, we learned that it's a healthy practice to explore options and draw designs for features we'd like to incorporate. But also, we realized that we shouldn't reinvent the wheel. Uh, I think it's important to remember the promised product deliverables and decide together if the work we engage on is actively helping us achieve that end deliverable. The third thing, uh, the unexpected event, is that starting from scratch is difficult. This also seems relatively obvious, but I think a lot of teams are also going to talk about how difficult it is to inherit an existing code base. And I think they definitely have a point, but it's also really difficult to begin with nothing. Uh, the process we engaged in was delegating the research to try to understand what technologies might be useful and then taking a leap of faith after we all voted on what we thought would be the best. Uh, and I think it actually worked out fine. The, the lesson we learned here is that it, it takes experience to know which tools uh, best fits your use case, and you're not always going to have that knowledge. So you shouldn't worry too much about picking what and like kind of being stuck in the, the phase of trying to decide which is the best tool. Just do an appropriate amount of research and then pick the tool that you think is the best and then use or remember that um, when you're uh, down the line when you've, you're doing this process again and kind of contrast the strengths and weaknesses of the things that you've used versus other technologies say. And then the last unexpected event was trying to estimate how long something is to take to complete. I think there were multiple weeks I had elements that I assumed were super easy, but didn't understand the underlying complexity of. And I think it would have been difficult to forecast just overall team velocity, given the time we expected certain things to take. Uh, so I think you should probably always estimate on the long run what you think is realistic. Uh, in time, I think an understanding of your capacity be, will be realized and that's okay. So yeah. So before we fully end this presentation, we just would like to give some thanks to some people. First, we want to thank the backend team for working with us throughout this entire process and for their quick responses to all of our inquiries, especially uh, near the end where basically if we asked them something, they would respond almost immediately. We also want to thank Bruce for the feedback that he provided throughout this project uh, through his experience over the years and with all the capstone projects he's overseen before. And then lastly, we also want to thank the sponsors for just working with us and providing us with this experience to develop this product. Thank you.